Let's play a game. Think of your favorite Smash tournament. Maybe it's the first tournament you ever watched live on Twitch, or it's the place you had the most fun with your melee homies, but regardless, bring back with me those memories that are forever burned into your brain. Got your favorite tournament? Okay. Name as many people responsible for that event as you can. Name as many members of the team that spent weeks, months, or even years of their lives preparing and doing everything they could to make that event as dope as possible. Whether it's the first iteration or the ninth, gather in your brain as many people who work behind the scenes, adding a crucial part to that big picture. How many did you get? Or more importantly, how many did you forget? No matter if you're a seasoned veteran of the scene or literally the head TO of that favorite major you were thinking of, I bet you'd forget a couple people who made that event better in some form. Whether it's the people selling art as you walk inside, the unpaid volunteer who set up 26 CRTs, or the people moderating the Twitch chat attempting to make this community welcoming on all sides, it takes a full team and then a full volunteer team to make these tournaments the spectacle that they are today, and our channel is built on giving those people the spotlight that they deserve. In today's video, we'll be highlighting the people who played a part in this scene who might not always get the full recognition for the things that they've done, not just at the major behind the scenes, but also the people who played a part in making this scene accessible for everyone. Coming on to two decades of do-it-yourself melee, there are countless moving parts that can be taken for granted, and this list could never be truly limited to 10 people, but we will rely on you to give praise to the people who help shape the reason that you play melee today. Our honorable mention slot goes to whoever person that you mention in the comments. Let's all take a moment in this YouTube atmosphere to fill this comment section with the unsung heroes of your melee journey. There is without a doubt one person or even a group you know who doesn't nearly get the praise that they deserve, but those people are the reason that you're clicking on this melee video in the first place. Everyone's path is deeply personal and I'm sure you can think of someone who is critical to your journey and underpraised on a greater scale. And lastly, for context, we did a previous video on tournament organizers that you should check out if you haven't, as we'll be leaving TOs off this list, because maybe there's some more that we can talk about in the future. Europe, I got you, don't worry. And streamers and commentators are undoubtedly a key member in everyone's start in this community, but we and everyone else think that they deserve their own video. I am only here because Edwin Jack hosted the Workshop 3 in Lowell, Massachusetts, and here's Alston Melee's 10 unsung heroes of the SSBM community. Subscribe for weekly Melee content, leave a comment for what you want to see next, and number 10, Epengu. For the next 3 minutes, whenever we say Zane, you are not allowed to think of the Red Marth hurting Fox players' feelings, we're talking about one of the few people who show up to the Major to try and bring back actually good content to the unappreciative mob that is Smash Reddit, please upvote this still. Zane Bansali, aka Epengu, is the Jacob Wolf of Grassroots Melee, and we will pseudo yell for Zane like we previously did for Wolf. From interviews, filming events, blog articles, Smash podcasts, commentary, HDC esports, the good old days, to now doing Cheddar esports and countless other notches on his belt, in our opinion, Elemental Penguin, that's a sick tag, deserves a little bit more recognition for the things that he's done for the Melee community. Zane is honestly a perfect example for one of this channel's core values, the idea that the accomplishments and work in this community can translate over to your professional life. Zane has not only used his experiences in the melee scene to continue his work in the esports world, but also consistently using his voice to bring melee to that conversation, introducing the game to esports organizations that seemingly had no interest previously. Along with the hours he put in for the Smash community, Epengu is a writer behind the successful YouTube series How Good Was This Pokemon Actually over on False Wipe Gaming, and we have a good feeling why that channel has a bunch of videos on melee. Zane has been fighting the good fight for Melee with his hustle at the venue and behind the scenes, and his workload and consistency clearly come from an honest love of this game. Number 9, everyone else behind Slippy besides Fizzy. Slippy is incredible. Jazz, yeah I know top level modders but it's not a big deal to me, has given the Melee community something we could have never imagined. Online play for Melee that completely wipes the floor with AAA games online experience. We have and will continue to cover how grateful we are for the gift that Fizzy gave us, but we are here today to talk about the lesser known soldiers in the war. Jazz himself credits Nikki, not the dope German Fox, but the man's perfecting melee streams and helping folks with Slippy on Discord for drumming up Patreon support for the project, as well as providing one-on-one -on -one support for those who search for it. 
Whether you downloaded Slippy on the day of release or you're just downloading it now, if you're struggling desperate for help, there's a good chance that Nikki's resources or direct DMs may come to your rescue. Additional mentions go to Milk Tea, being the main UX designer behind Slippy, and absolutely the reason that you thought, wow, this looks so good. And also Dan Salvato for his work with 20XX and UCF, being one of the first people to push Melee's after development to where it is today. The full developer list in the project shouldn't be overlooked, including Melee mechanic legends like Anther, obviously famous for Anther's Ladder, the original Netplay experience. Separate from the Slippy Development Squad, the Dolphin, Faster Melee, and Nintendo teams are still a part of the final vision. And lastly, a special shout out to Uncle Punch for quote, understanding the inner workings of Melee perhaps better than anyone, and along with creating the training tools that we personally have used to death, he's made major contributions to Melee's current meta and the little app that we can easily click on today. We should and will tell Jazz how f***ing talented he is every chance we get, but even he would tell you that Slippy could not have been completed without the help of countless people, and while we're sure we missed someone, thank you to everyone who's helped give us one of the biggest recent things to happen to Melee. Number 8, Bach. The first person to ever actually capture the feel of a Melee tournament, the perspective you see in countless moments of this game's lifetime, Eric Rickenbacker, no relation to the Survivor castaway, trust me we checked, aka Bach, is an underpraised legend of this community. Bach was initially just showing up to film his friends, but it quickly became more than that. Bach was a part of Team Ben, an old school group of goons who were some of the first Melee players to consistently travel the world, all for Melee. Featuring players like Wife, Husband, and Neo, who we've talked about on this channel, Team Ben was a formidable and founding crew in grassroots Melee. Bach's montages of the MLG era were the first of its kind and inspired countless people to try and bring their camera and capture the picture perfect moments that exist in Melee. Box videos had a major impact on the people unable to attend events because it was seriously like a lifeline into the community when there was none. Nowadays we have things like Twitch, Twitter, and 2000 person tournaments that make interacting with your favorite top player as easy as possible. But previous to box videos, you had no fucking way of knowing how these people you were watching really acted in real life or even sounded like. Sometime around 2006, Bach would start working directly with MLG after capturing multiple of their events for free. In this time, MLG would create many firsts for the Melee community, such as being one of the first tournaments to have a direct live feed instead of recorded footage, as well as one of the first to have an actual camera in the overlay. After going to countless US cities and even other countries, making videos of almost every tournament along the way, Bach and MLG would go their separate ways, with Bach's other commitments being more pressing. See, the thing we didn't tell you, and honestly we didn't know until we reached out to him directly, was that Bach has been a member of the US Air Force since 2002, thank you for your service, but not only that, he's a recognized videographer. Like, we're talking film Victoria's Secret's fashion show and has credits on HBO's The Wire. What started out as a fun thing to do with friends obviously became a much bigger and greater part of Bach's life, and instead of butchering his words in our tone, we'll just leave you with a quote from Bach himself that we recorded, obviously. <laughs> Never take your hobby and make it your job. Going to Melee events was a lot of fun, and I made a lot of lifelong friends. I got to go to Sweden twice, I got to go to Japan for two weeks, traveled all over the US, it was a blast. After my stint in the film industry, I switched to full-time in the Air Force after a deployment to Afghanistan, got married to my wife in 2011, and changed military jobs to IT. I think the best thing I took from tournaments was life experiences. That's worth way more than a CV citation. Spending time with the community and making dear friends. Hell, Papa Dave, Killa OR, and I have been friends for 15 years now. Every event I attended was like a family reunion. While Bach has obviously had his hands full and hasn't had the time to show up to melee tournaments for a minute, he made it clear that his heart is still nearby, and when asked if he had anything to tell the kids still showing up to tournaments today, he had this to say. I'd love for the community to remember back to the roots, remember it's just a game, and to enjoy it and the people who play it with them. Be respectful of each other and care for each other. I'm extremely proud of people like Samox and Prog doing the things I never could get the time to do. It isn't just going to film an event, it's being part of the event. You need to be more than an outside advisor. Be part of the community. Be a contributing member. Well said, Bach. Number seven, Papa Paint and Prog. While Prog does admittedly get a fair bit of recognition for his phenomenal and actually groundbreaking commentary, we include these two for their conjoined efforts of keeping the Melee videography vision alive that Bach once had. 
Papa Payne is undoubtedly an unsung hero of this community because so much of his work can be found as an integral part of the most popular Melee tournaments. Papa Paint's videos have played as much of a role in tournaments brandings as their logo does, and he's worked countless hours across the globe making your favorite tournament look as dope as it does. Grassroots photographers like Robert Paul, who is now an FGC legend, kept the torch burning with things like the Ocean Moment at Apex 2012, but Papa Paint and Prague went all in on the Melee community, and we can't thank them enough for their work. After working many of the most important events in Melee's history, in May of 2015, Prague, Papa Paint, and a few others started Last Dock Legends with the vision of detailing and covering the stories of how we got to where we are now. Season 1 of Last Dock Legends is some of our favorite Melee content that has ever been made, and we'd be lying if some of our stories weren't semi-based on the videos that we've watched and rewatched and rewatched again. These 10-40 to 40 minute long videos are some of the only first-hand perspectives that you can get on some of the most important events to happen in Melee's lifetime, and as much as this is a f***ing top 10 video or whatever, Last Dock Legends is consistently one of our biggest inspirations. After Season 1's release, in late 2017, it was announced that things would be slowing down dramatically for them, and while there was a couple different reasons, Papa Paint's comments on a blog post kinda sums it up best, saying that there wasn't a solution without massive compromise on the products we wish to create. It was announced that Season 2 would be releasing at a much more gradual pace, but unfortunately the channel hasn't released a video in over 3 years. Papa Paint and Prague remain a fundamental part of the Melee community, but their involvement has dwindled slightly along with their project. While we're not sure if Season 2 will ever truly see the light of day, Papa Paint and Prague have picked up the torch where Bach left off, and maybe it's time for someone else to try and pick up and follow in their footsteps. But let's make one thing clear. The work of the legends that came before us will never be unmentioned, and if you're complaining about something not being done in this community, it's on you to pick up those reins. Number 6, Walk 017 and Quester. This is Walk. While you might not recognize him from his Mario Maker streams, you might recognize him for his work elsewhere. In June of 2006, a video was uploaded to the hot up-and-coming website YouTube, but also countless other video platforms, with the intentions of spreading it as far as possible. This video was titled Advanced How to Play SSBM Part 1, with Part 2 and 3 coming shortly after. Compiled and built off of a Smashboards thread made by Quester that is unfortunately no longer available, the video had a major impact on not just the scene in 06, but to anyone still playing Melee today. Before this video's release, the only way to learn these hidden abilities was to either scour the depths of Smashboards or to know someone willing to teach you them all firsthand. Before Quester's full advanced how to play Smashboards post, there was no full how to or even list of the things people were doing at tournaments. And previous to Walk 017's video, Smashboards was one of the only learning resources that existed. Walk's videos did a phenomenal job at making the complicated line of inputs look like a reasonable technique anyone could learn, and this skyrocketed the general public's understanding of competitive melee. Today, Walk's video has been viewed over 750,000 times on YouTube, and it's in the category of one of the biggest melee videos that we have on the platform, and it's sure as shit one of the most helpful in that viral category. This video has taught an astronomical amount of people how to actually play Melee in a world where the developers of the game were either too scared to or just had no idea what actually lied beneath the surface. Whether you think Sakurai was doing shuffle nares or not, Walk was teaching everyone how to and is still teaching people to this day. Walk was nice enough to answer our questions when we incidentally found him streaming when writing this script, and for making this entry 20 times better, we're extremely grateful and you should 1000% follow him on twitch.tv slash walk017, not for us, but as an appreciation for what he's done for this community. Walk still plays Melee and can be occasionally found on Slippy Unranked, and we suspect our questions might have lended a helping hand towards him playing with a friend on stream the next day. Walk made it clear that he might have some unfinished business in the world of Melee content, and his comments got us a little excited for the future. I made, uh, I made a list of, uh, like, I wanted, I wanted to make uh, uh, um, Advanced How to Play Part 2. I mean, okay, Advanced How to Play Remastered, uh, as you could say. And I made a list of, uh, of, all the, um, of all the new techniques and everything. I don't know if I had it... Uh, Sorry. The other reason why I didn't do uh, Advanced Auto Play Remastered, the other main reason is that 
I want somebody to talk. You know what I mean? But uh, I have an accent and I don't want myself to, to speak. So I would need somebody who is who talks in English and doesn't have any. <clears throat> I, I mean, if you're looking for someone. Number five, Smash EG and Challenge. We've come a long way from the pen and paper brackets that were commonplace in 03. TIO Pro and Tournament Maker 2 were some of the first bracket software used by Melee TOs, and if you want to see us do a deep dive on the history of SSBM tournament software, let us know. But as time went on and events became a much bigger ordeal, the need for displaying brackets and information in a concise way became much more sought after. Around 2011 to 2013, Challenge's place in the Melee scene would become more widespread, with Challenge offering a web-based bracket software that updates in real time. Challenge's biggest benefit has, and probably will always be, accessibility because the platform is still one of the easiest ways to create a bracket today. But at the time of its growing popularity in Melee, the ability for players to check and monitor their brackets from their phone was huge, and this is one of the first steps to alleviating a growing pain point for tournament organizers. While tournaments were growing larger, TOs for the most part were still stuck with the same tools they were using. The bigger events at the time had to host websites and blog posts in order to get the word out on when players were expected to show up, and making 40 different challenge brackets for all the pools you were running didn't really make anything easier. Smash GG was in part created as an answer to this problem that the biggest Smash tournaments were facing, and their name was ballsy enough to get our attention. Working directly with Melee tournament organizers from the very beginning, and still do to this day, Smash GG really proved their place as an extremely helpful resource, and the tools that they would create would do much more than just help you find your pool. While nowadays these two platforms have been compared in verses against to death, we just want to show our appreciation to two real companies who have helped Melee tournaments progress. Whether that's Challenge being the most reliable, coherent, and easy tool for organizers to lean on at their most stressed out points, or it's Smash GG completely redefining what the entire process for a major tournament looks like start to finish, we just want to say, thanks for helping our scene. Number 4, Smash Sisters. Give them an award. I know SmashCon has attempted something prior, but we should honestly create a fucking Melee Hall of Fame just to put these two people in it. Milk T, aka Little Chen, and Emily Sun, aka NYC Melee Goat, have led the charge for making this scene a more welcoming place, and that is exactly what should be a top priority for anyone in this community. A Melee tournament isn't always a welcoming place for everyone in the room, and if you're trying to downplay that aspect, you're a part of the problem. Smash Sisters are a series of crew battles at different events for women, as well as people who are trans, non-binary, and anyone else who feels accepted in the inclusive side event. They host multiple crew battles, allowing people from different levels to play against similarly skilled opponents. With that in mind, one of the coolest things Smash Sisters did was their choice of format. Crew battles are one of the most accessible and hype game formats Melee has to offer because whether you're an experienced competitor watching people play Melee for the first time, or you're literally that person who's never played competitive Melee F smashing on the stream setup, crew battles have a real sense of camaraderie and are constantly interesting to watch. Smash Sisters crew battles are fun to spectate, fun to be a part of, and have been a positive interaction for people looking to find their home in the Melee scene. Smash Sisters has consistently been the reason and moment that everything clicked for so many because it was the first time that people felt normal and accepted competing. Every time a Smash Sisters event takes place, someone innocently falls in love with Melee because for a brief moment, that part of the venue is without the normal plagues of discrimination that come with being a marginalized person in this community. We have plenty of friends who would list a Smash Sisters side event as one of their favorite memories in Smash, and this event has truly set the standard for how to create a welcoming scene. Milk Tea and Emily Wave's vision can be found at major Smash events across the world, regardless if they're attending or not. And from the bottom of our heart, thank you for giving our friends a place they feel welcome. Number three, Gaming Generations. It is mind boggling how little praise Gaming Gen has received for the amount of work that they've put in at almost every single f***ing Melee Major, but we will gladly be the ones to break it down, to break the venue down, <laughs> Never mind. Gaming Generations is responsible for every single tournament setup at all of the modern biggest events in Melee. That includes the Wii or the GameCube, the disc that they're playing on, the memory card, the extension cords, the lanyard you're wearing, the f***ing stage for the stream, and most importantly of all, every goddamn hunk of plastic and wires made in the early 2000s that we call a CRT. 
That's right, Gaming Generations has supplied the full tournament setups for events like Big House, Genesis, Shine, CEO, Gommel, Combo Breaker, Evo, and practically any other modern national that you can think of, all run off of Gaming Generations CRTs and consoles, and they are one of, if not the only, service traveling worldwide to provide melee setups with 150 in the chamber. I honestly couldn't even tell you the full list of things that Gaming Gen does for events because it goes that deep. Without Gaming Generation's commitment to the Melee scene, we honestly have no idea what majors would even look like today. Events at the national level have clearly moved past relying on attendees to bring setups, and as the Melee scene has been stuck with CRTs from the get-go, Gaming Generations has been the only company able to meet our needs. Gaming Generations is an example of the companies that we think of as these faceless people behind the scenes, but in reality, they're always just a merch booth away. These people are not only the ones supplying the CRTs and setups at all of our favorite tournaments, but also the ones setting up the venue and taking it down at the end of the weekend. Be nice to the people who are the reason you can show up. On multiple occasions, we've seen people be blatantly rude to gaming gen staff because they're attempting to break down the setup that you're playing on. You have no idea how much work the person killing your friendlies has put into this event, and you should be fucking grateful that you don't have to clean up the venue on Sunday. Gaming Generations is one of the many reasons we have nice things, and from our experience, the people behind that booth are pretty fucking cool too. Number two, HMW. Homemade Waffles, HMW, The Waffle 77, Brandon, regardless of how you know him, HMW is one of the biggest idols we have in the Melee community, and the work he has put in across two decades could never be summarized in one section of a video, so we'll waste no time getting to it. HMW in-game has been known as a dope Dr. Mario main back in the day, and even a doper Falco main in the current ages, but today we're here to talk about his achievements out of game. Way back in late 2006, commentary and recording setups were sparse. Commentary really hadn't been done since the MLG events, and those didn't always have the most informed opinions. While Scar and Wife have been credited with being some of the first people to do commentary at the grassroots level, we credit Brandon and Phil for making melee commentary cool and fun for the first time. Scar and Wife would for sure find their groove in later installments, but we think even they would admit to their start not being so hot. HMW was one of the first people to start lugging the equipment needed to record local California events, and the commentary and hard work would pay off soon enough. Today, the Waffle77's YouTube channel is home to multiple of the most popular and important videos in Melee's history, and while the 17 million viewed Wombo Combo video wasn't actually uploaded to this channel, the viralness did trickle down a decent bit. While the channel is a relic of Melee history and was used as a platform for this community, Brandon is just as involved today. In the wake of COVID shutting down everything, Homemade Waffles has stepped up like no other tournament organizer has, creating the Rollback Rumble series, an online tournament with multiple events a week all across the globe. Rollback Rumble has been the peak of Melee competition in a time where we were desperately scrolling through the Twitch channels. And it kind of reminded us of the times where he was the only one dedicated enough to bring the stream setup back in 2007. The Rollback Rumble series would go on to be an inspiration, starting point, and qualifying event for Beyond the Summit's recent push with the SCL and Summit Online, but at the grassroots level, no one can hold a candle up to the work that Brandon has been putting in during quarantine. Hey Brandon, thanks. From the whole Melee community, from anyone who's ever appreciated one of the many things that you've done, for constantly donating your time to making this scene a fucking cooler place, thank you man and our number one unappreciated hero of the Melee community, Dr. Piggy. A fair warning, we will be touching on the not so great parts of this scene, and if that is not what you clicked on this video for, we understand if you like to click off now. But as we briefly touched on, the Smash community is not a welcoming place for everyone, and it's on us to make it one. Dr. Piggy, I honestly don't have the words to correctly thank you enough, but please know that your impact on this scene will never be something we let subside. In the beginning of 2019, a Smash Code of Conduct panel was created out of necessity on the backings of the brief work that had been done prior, due to players being accused of terrible things but facing no widespread repercussions from attending tournaments. The Melee community had handled multiple members' most desperate and vulnerable moments in such a pathetic way, and Dr. Piggy was practically forced to become one of the people we needed most. Creating the Code of Conduct panel and bringing on tournament organizers and other crucial members of this community for the first time in Melee's history, we had a real way to get the people who are causing harm to members of our scene 
actually out and unable to hurt others. Over time, the code of conduct would get the backing of more and more organizers, growing its list of banned players while surveying and communicating with all of the panelists and organizers involved with complete transparency, quite literally creating a better place for everyone. About five months ago from the release of this video, damning information was released on multiple members of the community who were once looked up to. Due to the amount of people feeling strong and brave enough to come out and tell their story, others felt confident enough to do so as well. Every single one of these people who knew that no matter what they say they would face backlash and unwanted attention are truly an unsung hero of this community. At the end of October, a few weeks after appearances on Dr. K's Twitch psychology show to talk about the Smash community's future, Dr. Piggy posted a twit longer called Closing the Smash Chapter. We're not going to attempt to summarize her words, and you should pause and read this in full to truly understand what she had to do for us, but it was clear that she was no longer going to be involved in Smash or the Code of Conduct in the same way anymore. It will never only be on one individual to create a better and safer scene, and if you are unwilling or unable to help try, I do not want to be in the same spaces as you. Dr. Piggy may have stepped down from the scene, but she left all the tools and resources available for us to pick up where she left off. We do not need another Dr. Piggy. We need a community willing to actually improve and learn from its mistakes instead of trying to hide away our failures. The ability to be anonymous might be ruining the internet. Go to the Twitter replies of a famous person, the comments on a multi-million viewed YouTube video, or really any successful Twitch stream, and I guarantee you'll find awful comments that were solely intended to hurt someone's feelings. This is a problem that exists and is growing bigger on every single social media platform available, but our community has an out. Even when we are given the best resources available to move our community online, we all think of this time as the low without in-person events because that's exactly what our scene is, in person. This scene and the people who came before us have taught much more than just advanced techniques, but gave us life lessons and longtime friends, and we like to think that us at Alston Melee have grown up too in our time being here. Even if it feels like no one is watching, be a positive force in this community. If something isn't being done to the standard that you think it should be, god damn it, you have a job to do now. Nintendo will never put the Melee community on the salary it deserves, and that means there will constantly be work to do. But do not get this f***ed up. The fact that this scene is truly all ours is the biggest gift they could have ever given to us, because the betterment of this scene will always be on us. One day at a time, we will create a bigger and better community, if not only to continue the vision of the legends who changed our f***ing lives.